High-ranking UN official says the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine, which is controlled by pro-Russia activists, is facing a dire humanitarian situation due to a lack of social services. A lot of people are preparing to leave, not only because of security, but because of their social and economic prospects. It may be a big exodus, and it's going to be a, a major challenge. Semenovich said the crisis at Ukrainian region is running short of crucial supplies, including medicine. He did not give an exact estimate of how many people were thought to be contemplating leaving, but said that the condition is frightening. The UN official also said that the upcoming presidential election in Ukraine would make no difference as the window of opportunity to resolve the crisis is closing fast. Fighting broke out in eastern Ukraine last month after Kiev launched a military offensive against pro-Russia groups that have seized over a dozen towns and declared independence in Donetsk and neighboring Luhansk. Let's cross over to Berlin now. Joining us via Skype is Manuel Ochsenreiter. He's a chief ed editor of Swerst. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, sir. Now, first of all, how concerned do you think the interim authorities uh, in Kiev are with regards to this humanitarian crisis in the making uh, in the east of the country? Well, uh, how, how much concerned is a fire starter about a fire in the neighbor house? I think this is uh, more or less a question like that. The Kiev government actually is the main res responsible for what is right now happening. What is happening in eastern Ukraine is we can, we can blame the military operation launched by Kiev. And this is not just a military operation. It's not just used the military forces of the rest Ukrainian army. It has also used uh, militias, irregular troops, uh, terrorist units, uh, well, simple violent hooligans. So there, there is a crisis, but the responsibility for that crisis is in Kiev and uh, not in Donetsk or Lugansk or even Moscow. Right. So now there are many who are pointing to this presidential election just around the corner, uh, saying that that will be the thing that will be an answer to Ukraine's woes and unite the country, the East and the West. Uh, do you see it that way too? No, it's the complete contradiction. Right now we see that the election campaigns and the preparation for those elections really split the country much more. We have to say today that there is no Ukrainian state anymore. We have to say there is a failed state, an empty area, an entity which is are not under control by the capital, by the city. We have the south and the east, where we were first talking about uh, um, pro-federation forces from the people there. They wanted to have a federation, but the Kiev government pushed them that they right now they declared independence uh, a couple of days ago after a referendum. So there cannot be a Ukrainian president who will represent the Ukrainian state as we see it until today on the maps. We will see maybe a half president representing the western areas of Ukraine. Southern and eastern Ukraine said very clearly they will not participate at a presidential election because they don't feel anymore being part of the Ukrainian state. And those campaigns, and uh, these are political campaigns as well, they push this much more. And just to say one last sentence, we see also the understanding, the weird understanding of democracy by the European Union. At the same time when, for example, Angela Merkel, the German can chancellor, makes pressure to, to say these presidential elections have to take place and they are legal. At the same day, she wants to prevent, or Germany wants to prevent the Syrians living in Germany to participate at the Syrian presidential elections. They, are, they say they shall not go to the Syrian embassy to elect their president. So we see this really, really huge uh, geopolitical interpretation of democracy in the one country they try to push it. Where the people want to go to elections, they say don't go. And where the people don't want that election, they say this is a legal election. But then, Mr. Ochsenreiter, uh, considering that, uh, and specifically the fact that these people in Donetsk and Luhansk are adamant to stick with the outcome of the referendum that calls for independence um, from Kiev, can the interim authorities in Kiev even be considered responsible for the humanitarian uh, situation in Donetsk and Luhansk? 
Um, the responsibility for the humanitarian situation is not the referendum. The referendum didn't take the social services from the country. What we see now is that the military operation, that they surround the city, that they are not doing a humanitarian corridor for people to leave in a safe way if they want to leave. So this has the humanitarian situation itself doesn't have anything to do with the referendum. This is, by the way, what Kiev claims. But um, I don't know where in any time of history an election or a referendum changed the, the direct humanitarian situation of the people on the ground. So this is an excuse maybe used by Kiev and used by the West that they say so. And it's a, by the way, it's a very cynical interpretation of the situation to say, well, you wanted to be independent, now take the result, now starve, now don't find a doctor, now don't get medicine. I think this is very, very cynical. But on the other side, we are very much used such cynical explanations by the West in the past. Okay, that was Manuel Orsenreiter, chief editor of Swerst, joining us from Berlin via Skype. Many thanks indeed for your comments here on Press TV, sir.